These beautiful flowers represent one aspect of plant life. Fragile and fragrant, they bloom for a few fleeting days, spread their perfumed sweetness, and then fade and are gone forever. One would never believe at first thought that these gorgeous specimens of the horticulturist's garden could bear any relationship to the seemingly unromantic yeast cell. And yet the analogy is a very strong one. While they have many things in common, we are primarily interested in the difference between them. For while the roses, orchids, and other fragrant examples of plant life appeal to us for their beauty alone, their distant relative, the practical yeast cell, commands our attention because of its usefulness. Just as the greenhouse serves the florist, the Fleischmann yeast plants serve the baker by producing the type of plant life that he will appreciate most, pure baker's yeast. The story of the production of millions of pounds of yeast begins in a laboratory, where a few lonely yeast cells are first taken from a test tube. Then our scientist separates a few yeast cells and places them under the lens of this microscope. In this way, he is able to discern which cells possess the characteristics necessary for pure, healthy yeast. By means of a special hollow glass needle controlled by a micro-manipulator, he is able to isolate any one of the microscopic cells from the other cells living just a few thousandths of an inch away. When he has collected just a few perfect specimens of healthy yeast, they are placed in a sterilized test tube, where they feed on a nutrient solution called wort, which promotes strong, healthy development. Then the cells themselves take over, multiplying rapidly in their perfect environment. Like any growing family, it isn't long before the cells have outgrown their living room. And so they are transferred to larger flasks by a procedure that guards against the possibility of introducing any foreign matter or wild yeast into our carefully protected culture. flasks are placed in a cabinet which maintains the constant temperature experience has proven to be most conducive to rapid, healthy growth. Once again, the problem becomes one of room and food, and so our pure strain of yeast cells are now transferred to still larger living quarters and supplied with the necessary amount of work. Over and over again, this process is repeated with painstaking care. As the yeast culture grows and grows, it is constantly transferred to larger flasks, fed with more wort, and then permitted to grow some more. All the while, the trained eyes of the scientist inspect sample cells of the culture to make sure that the strain remains as pure as it was at the outset. The meticulous care with which the transfers are handled is an absolute necessity. For if any mold, bacteria, or wild yeast were to get into the culture, the work of days would be lost and the whole process would have to start over again from the beginning. But constant vigilance is rewarded, and at long last, we now have a large enough supply of pure yeast cells to seed the fermenters of the Fleischmann plants. Here in the plant, the procedure inaugurated in the laboratory is continuous, but on a commercial production basis. Now the test tubes and flasks of the laboratory are replaced by tanks and fermenters of ever-increasing capacity. Here our yeast culture, which started with a few cells under a microscope, will grow into the millions of pounds which the Fleischmann plants produce each year. And what's more, every yeast cell in every pound will be just as pure as the original cells plucked from the test tube.
After many intermediate stages, the yeast finally reaches the largest of its temporary homes, these huge 100,000 gallon fermenters. An extremely careful check is kept on the development of the yeast inside the fermenter by means of meters, which record the temperature, aeration, and other factors important to the proper growth of the yeast. Let's go inside one of these fermenters while it is being charged. First, the water is admitted. Then sterile air is forced through the water to prevent the accumulation of excessive quantities of metabolic products and to furnish oxygen for the growth of the yeast. When the attendant sees that everything is in order, he opens a valve and the wort begins to stream into the fermenter. Finally, the seed yeast which we have watched grow from just a few cells, pours into the agitated wort solution. Now the yeast cells rapidly begin to feed upon the food material and multiply. So rapidly, in fact, that in just a few hours there will be 15 tons of new yeast grown in this fermenter. From a spigot atop the fermenter, an attendant draws a sample of the mash for inspection. Constant tests are made at a laboratory bench near the fermenter during this most important period in the production of yeast. Factors such as sugar concentration, acidity, and many others must be constantly checked and rigorously controlled. Since the slightest deviation in any of these factors might prove disastrous to the thousands of gallons of yeast, which have been so painstakingly raised from the original culture, these tests are vitally important. They guarantee that every batch of yeast that leaves the fermenter will meet the stringent Fleischmann standards for hardiness and strength. In this particular test, the acidity of the mash is determined. having reached the peak of maturity and development, is now pumped to the centrifuges to be separated from the wort. But the yeast is still only half clean. It must now be washed in pure sterile water to remove every vestige of remaining wort. After its bath in the water-filled fermenter, the yeast is once again pumped back to the separators, where all the wort and most of the water are separated from the pure yeast. Before compressing, the yeast must be cooled, and so it now flows over a series of refrigerated coils in a large cooling tank. These filter presses are made up of a series of plates through which the yeast is pumped. Pressure forces the water out through filter cloths between each plate, leaving nothing but pure yeast compressed against the cloths. When all the water has been pressed out, the attendants move in to harvest the crop of pure baker's yeast. No longer a culture of cells, nor a thick suspension in the solution. As it is scraped from the filter cloths, the yeast now, for the first time, begins to assume, though roughly, its familiar solid form.
At this point, the cartload of yeast, as far as its organic nature is concerned, is no different than the pounds of yeast in the baker's refrigerator. But there still remains the job of mixing and attaining the yeast's final and familiar shape. As the large, irregular chunks of yeast fall into the mixer, a revolving screw blade breaks them up, thoroughly mixes them, and forces the yeast down into the machine, where it is extruded and molded. From the darkness of test tubes, fermenters, and mixers, the yeast now emerges into the spotless, sunlit splendor of the cutting and wrapping room, with its gleaming tiles and carefully filtered air. This latter feature is the final precaution to ensure the absolute purity of the yeast. Almost human machines stamp the name Fleischmann into each pound, and then quickly and deftly wrap each one in the familiar blue and white wrapper. But once again, before the yeast is allowed to leave the plant, the ever-watchful laboratory steps in. Periodically, regular pound packages are taken from the production line and subjected to numerous chemical and biological tests. In the particular test shown here, a carefully weighed piece of the pound of yeast is placed in a flask for the purpose of making a protein determination. Notwithstanding all the precautions taken in the plant process to protect the purity of the yeast, vigilance is endless. And so even now, a laboratory technician makes one further test under the microscope to guarantee freedom from contamination. But our friend the baker doesn't have microscopes and testing flasks. The oven is his laboratory, and he is interested only in how the yeast will perform in the dough. Therefore, before the yeast leaves the plant, it must also be tested the way the baker will test it. Since the baking laboratory at the plant deals in small batches and adheres to strict scientific procedure, all the ingredients to be used in the dough are weighed and prepared with the greatest possible accuracy. With a precision that would be the envy of the Rockettes, the girls synchronize their motions perfectly as they pour the ingredients into the mixers. This is to make certain that each dough receives identically the same treatment. special round copper cylinders, the doughs are placed in the oven. These cylinders have a gauge on top that indicates the volume of the enclosed loaf. Thus, when the loaf is taken from the oven, the volume can be quickly determined and recorded. When it is certain that the yeast will give A1 performance in straight, sponge, and sweet doughs, it is ready for packing and shipment. Every 50 pound carton is stamped with a code number for the purpose of identification.
flawless mechanical ease with which this ingenious machine seals the flaps of the cartons is symbolic of the smoothly operating manufacture that day after day and year after year characterizes the production of millions of pounds of yeast in Fleischmann plants and laboratories all over the country. Every pound of yeast is backed by a tradition of more than three quarters of a century of unparalleled quality. Since 1867, Fleischmann's yeast has been serving the bakers of America, helping them produce an ever finer staff of life. This quality yeast has proved itself again and again by its performance in the baker's dough, where its strength, or dough performance, is always outstanding. And in thousands of gleaming ovens, Fleischmann's yeast has demonstrated its ability as the soul of the loaf. Even though modern bakeries and baking methods have changed tremendously since the early Egyptians first learned the secret of leavened bread, yeast is still the vital ingredient of man's most beloved basic food. As it emerges gold and brown and tempting from the oven with its matchless bread bouquet, it is a never-ending boon to all mankind. <laughs> 